Alright, thanks for watching. And today I want to do something really cool. I want to find the limit of the area of an N-gon. So you may say, what is an N-gon? No, it's not a Pokemon. Well, I guess you gotta integrate them all. So, I guess it's easiest to explain by a picture. Name your three-gon. What it is, is just an equilateral triangle whose radius is R. Or in some sense, you can also think of it as simply a triangle that's inscribed, a circle, inside of a circle of radius R. And then a foregone, well, that's just a square whose radius is R. So whose half the diagonal is R, and you can also think of it as a square that's inscribed inside a circle. And you can continue. I can't draw pentagons, but let me draw a six gon. So hexagons, then it's just a hexagon whose radius is R. So a hexagon also inscribed inside a circle. So you can think of an n gon, think of n very large, as being this weird polygonal thing that sort of as radius r, and that's inscribed inside a circle of uh, radius r, in fact. And what I want to show you that, um, in some sense, if you let n go to infinity, you do get a circle. So claim an infinite gon is a circle of radius r. In fact, the picture should look like that, you know. If you have many, many sides, then in fact you get a radius r, circle of radius r. And I want to show you this is at least true in terms of areas. Namely, if you take the area of an n-gon and you let n go to infinity, you indeed get the area of a, of a circle. And in some sense, we do have convergence in that way because the n-gon is always strictly inside the circle. So if the area of the n-gon goes through the area of the circle, in some sense that n-gon fills up the whole circle. And how do you do this? Simply using calculus. So in fact, no integration even required. We just need some limits. Okay, so the question is, what is the area of an n-gon? Well, let's see what an n-gon is. It's simply this weird object, right, with n sides of radius r. And first of all, here's the thing. Suppose we cut that n-gon into n triangles, then the area, so let a n be the area of an n-gon, First of all, of course, because we cut this n-gon into n triangles, the area of an n-gon is n times the area of each triangle. So maybe let's, let me shade this a little bit. And by the way, this a triangle will have angle theta. We'll figure out theta in a moment. Over once you have a triangle, it's a little bit easier to deal with right triangles. So just take this triangle here, and again, this is the radius r, this is the radius r. You can split it into two times the right triangle with half the angle, so theta over two. And remember, this is r. And therefore, what is a n? It's again, n pieces, but each piece we divide it into two. So really, two n times the area of the right triangles, where here we have r and it's theta over 2. And now let's determine the area of the triangle. Now it's not too bad. So, again, if this is theta over 2 and this is r, let's call this the base and let's call this the height. So the area of the right triangle 
is one half times base times height. Now, what is the base? Again, abracadabra sokatoa. So first of all, sine of theta over two. Right, that's opposite over hypotenuse, so it's B over R. So B is R sine of theta over 2. And similarly, if you do adjacent over hypotenuse, you get that H equals to cosine of theta over 2 equals to H over R. I do not R. So H is R cosine of theta over 2. And therefore, the area then becomes 1 half times R sine of theta over 2 times R cosine of theta over 2. And that's 1 half R squared sine of theta over 2 cosine of theta over 2. It turns out we can simplify this a little bit because remember we have this identity sine of 2 alpha is 2 sine of alpha cosine of alpha. So in fact the product sine of alpha cosine of alpha is just sine of 2 alpha over 2. And so this whole junk here then becomes sine of 2 times theta over 2, over 2, and that becomes sine of theta over 2. So we didn't even need to figure out theta over 2, because that just becomes theta. And so in the end, the area of the right triangle becomes 1 half r squared sine of theta over 2, which is r squared over 4 sine of theta. And therefore, what is a n? Remember, we cut it up into n pieces. So n, each piece we cut into 2, and then times the area of that, so r squared over 4 sine of theta. And you can simplify this. to be n r squared over 2 sine of theta. Now the question is, I'm sure you've been asking that for a long time, uh, what is theta? Well, it's actually easy to determine. The whole like, uh, revolution is 2 pi, and we, we cut it into n pieces, so each angle is 2 pi over n. If we cut it into three pieces, it's 2 pi over 3. So theta is 2 pi over n. And yes, tau aficionados can just say it's tau over n. So it's n r squared over 2 sine of 2 pi over n. And the question is, now we want to take the limit as n go to infinity of that. But we have an issue because we have infinity times 0 which is an indeterminate form. And so, we want to use L'Hopital, which is possible, but in fact, turns out we don't even have to use L'Hopital. It's like one of those things even a beginning calculus student can do, because let's just write that in a different form. So this becomes, if you want, r squared sine of 2 pi over n, over uh, 2 over n. And let's just multiply top and bottom by pi. So pi r squared sine of 2 pi over n divided by 2 pi over n. And now we can let n go to infinity. And remember, there's this really nice rule that says sine of love over love. So it's sine of junk over junk goes to 1 as this junk goes to zero. And in fact, I've done a video on that. It's a pretty cool proof. And we can apply this with heart equals to 2 pi over n, which does go to zero as n go to infinity. 
So what I'm saying is, this whole thing actually goes to 1, and we're left with simply pi r squared. So it's really, really cool if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the area of this n-gon, you indeed get the area of a circle. So in this sense, the n-gons do fill up the circle, which is really neat. And notice no you know, integration involved. The only limit fact we needed is this one, which is usually taught at the beginning of limits. So it's cool. All right, so if you like that and you wanna see more calculus and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.